Ferdowsi is one of the old poets who wrote many stories in the form of poetry. One of his famous books is the Shahnameh book, from which you can read the story of Rostam and Sarab. In this video, we visit one of the old museums located in the tomb of Ferdowsi and visit its ancient works. Meanwhile, we are trying to tell you a summary of the fascinating story of Rostam and Sarab. If you are interested in hearing the story, stay with us until the end of the video. Dear friends, a lot of effort and time has been spent to prepare this video. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel to support us. We look forward to reading your comments in the comments section. One day Rostam got ready for hunting and went to the border of Tehran with his horse named Raksh. Then he saw they're full of zebras and was very happy. So, he hunted a zebra and lit a fire to cook the zebra. Rostam slept after eating food and drinking water. Meanwhile, eight Turkish riders saw his appearance and followed him. Raksh kicked two of them. But the other riders were able to wrap the rope around the horse's neck and take it to the village. When Rostam woke up and did not see his face, he was very sad and went to Samangan on foot to find him. When Rostam reached Samangan, the king of Samangan realized that Rostam had come on foot and lost his horse. So, he went to meet him and welcomed him warmly. Rostam said, I lost my horse here. If you find him, I will reward you, otherwise, I will cut off the heads of your elders. The king said don't be angry and be my guest. We will find your horse. The king took him to the palace and received him well. When night fell and everyone slept, a girl came to Rostam with a scented candle. Rostam was surprised to see him and asked him what is your name what are you doing here at this time of night? The girl answered. I am the daughter of the king of Samangan, and my name is Tamane. Among the princes, there is no one equal to me. No one has ever seen my face or heard my voice. I have heard a lot about your bravery and courage, and now I find you here. I am infatuated with you, and I want to search all Samangan to find your horse. When Rostam saw that beautiful and clever girl, he proposed to her father. The king of Samangan was happy and agreed to their marriage. When morning came, there was a bead on Rostam's arm, which was known all over the world. He gave it to Tamane and said, If our child is a girl, tie this to her hair, and if it is a boy, tie it to her arm. Then he said goodbye to him, and went to the king of Samangan. The king gave him the good news that he had found the horse. Rostam got on his horse and went happily to Iran and from there to Zabalestan. After nine months, Tamane gave birth to a very beautiful son and named him Sorab. When he was one month old, he was like a one-year-old child, and at the age of three, he stepped into the field of learning to fight, and at the age of ten, no one could fight him. One day Sorab went to his mother and said, Who is my father? What should I answer if someone asked so? The mother said, You are Rostam's son, and you are a descendant of Sam and Zal. He showed him a letter from Rostam with three faceted rubies and three bags of gold that his father had sent to them when he was born. Tamane said Afrasiab should not know anything about this because he is your father's enemy and if your father knows that you have become such a strong man, he will take you to him and I will be sad to be away from you. But Sorab said, this is not something I want to hide and you should not have hidden it. Now I will prepare an army of Turkish men and go to Iran and depose Kavis from the throne, and then I will appoint my father, Rostam, to rule instead of Kavis. Then I will go to Tehran, destroy Afrasiab, and call you the Lady of Iran. Sarab wanted to find a horse. Therefore, Tamane said to the shepherd, Bring here as many horses as we have so that he can choose the best one. But every horse they brought could not withstand Sorab's hand. 
In the meantime, one of the brave men came and said that I have a horse of Raksh breed. Saurabh was happy and tested and chose that horse. Then he went to the king of Samangan and the king equipped him for war. Ephrasiab learned that Saurabh had gathered an army and intended to fight with Kavis. He was happy and sent two of his companions Homan and Barman to Rostam with an army of 12,000 people and told them that Saurabh should not recognize his father in battle until they faced each other. If Rostam is killed, we will easily seize Iran and then kill Saurabh in his sleep in one night. But if Saurabh was killed in the battle, we have taken revenge on Rostam. So Homan and Barman went to Saurabh with a letter from Afrasiab in which he wrote that if Iran is seized, Samangan, Iran, and Tehran will unite, and we will help you. The troops went to the border of Iran. There was a fortress called White Fortress, which Iranians had high hopes for, and its guard was named Hajar. Gestum, who was one of the elders of that fortress, had a famous equestrian daughter named Gardafirid. When Saurabh arrived near White Fort, Hadjar quickly went to him on a horse. Saurabh took out his sword and asked his name and race. He said, I have no equal in war, and my name is Hadjar, and now I will behead you. Saurabh laughed and quickly walked forward. After the fight between the two, Saurabh threw him from his horse and tried to cut off his head, but he refused and captured Hadjar. When Gestum's daughter became aware of the issue, she prepared herself for battle. He hid his hair under his armor and declared war with Saurabh. Saurabh came to his war. First, Gardafrid shot him, then they fought with a spear, and she threw a spear at Saurabh. Enraged, Saurabh came forward and hit her belt with a spear and tore his armor. Then Gardafrid tried to attack with a spear, so Saurabh cut his spear in half and angrily attacked him. But suddenly, he saw the girl as hair and got distracted. Then he tied her tightly and told her not to try to get away from me. Why did you want to fight with me? I have never been caught by a hunter like you. Gordo Afford said to him, O oh, brave one, two armies are watching us. So don't ask for shame and blame for me. Now that the fortress is under your control. So he gave Sorb a meaningful smile and his eyes mesmerized Sorb. Saurabh came with him to the fortress door and released him. Gardafrid quickly entered the fort and went to the top of the fort and from there he said to Saurabh, O oh great warrior, return to Tehran. She just laughed that Iranians do not marry Turkish people. Saurabh said, I will finally get you. You promised to marry me. Saurabh said, Today has passed. We will come again tomorrow to fight and I will finally get you. When Saurab came back, Gizdam wrote a letter to Kavis that a large army has come to fight with us, with a warrior who is not more than 14 years old, and I have never driven anyone like him. His name is Saurab and he is exactly like Rostam. He defeated Hadjar and now Hadjar is his captive. Gizdam gave the letter and told him to go under the fort so that no one sees you, and then they also ran away from the same road. When the sun rose, the Tehrans got ready for battle and Saurabh sat on his horse with a spear in his hand and got ready for battle. But when he tried to attack the fort, he did not see anyone and realized that they had all fled at night. When Rostam arrived in Iran, Kavis ordered them to move towards the White Fortress. Saurabh saw a very large Iranian army, an endless army. Homan sighed in fear. Saurabh said, you should not be afraid because no one is my equal and I do not see a famous person. Rostam put on Turkish clothes and turned white inside the fortress. Saurabh asked Hadjar to show Rostam to him, but she said that Rostam is not here. If it was you, you would know him from his stout body and understand that you cannot go to war with him. Saurabh decided to fight and went to the heart of Kavis' army and said to the king, why did you name yourself Kavis? You do not have the strength to fight with lions. I swore to destroy all Iranians and hang Kavis. Meanwhile, Rostam put on iron clothes and sat on his horse and went to Saurabh. When Rostam reached near Saurabh, he said, Let's go from here to the other side and fight. 
Sorab accepted and asked for hand-to-hand -hand combat, and said, You are worn out, and do not have the strength to fight with me. Rostam said, Calm down. Wait till you see me in battle. My heart hurts, and I don't want to kill you. Sorab suddenly asked, Who are you, and what race are you from I think you are Rostam? Rostam said, No, I am not. Then both of them engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat with swords. The armor of both fighters was torn. Their bodies were full of sweat, and their lips were dry. Rostam said to himself, I have never seen anyone like him. Sorab hit Rostam on the shoulder with a mace, and he writhed in pain. But finally they realized that they could not kill each other. Rostam attacked the Torin army and Sorab attacked the Iranian army and killed many soldiers. Both were very tired. Rostam said, It is night, we will fight tomorrow. After this battle, when the soldiers left, Sorab said to Homan, I think that he is Rostam, and I should not fight him. Homan said, I have fought with him many times, he is not Rostam. Then Sorab came to the battle plane again, and said to Rostam with a happy face, How did it go let's sit down and talk? I search for your name a lot. So don't hide your name. I want to know you. Rostam said, Last night there was talk of wrestling. I will not be fooled by your words. So they were fighting for a while, when Sorab finally grabbed Rostam's belt, knocked him to the ground, and pulled a dagger. But Rostam said, The custom is that if someone is knocked down, they should not cut off his head the first time, but they do it the second time they knock him down. Sorab accepted because he was brave. When Rostam was freed from Sorab's grip, he went to the water, and then he prayed to God and remembered the past years that his excessive strength was causing him trouble and he asked God to reduce his strength, but now that he was in front of Sorab, he said, God, give me back my past strength. They went to the battlefield again. This time, Rostam knocked Sorab to the ground, so he pulled a dagger and tore his chest. In the last minutes of his life, Sorab said, my mother gave me my father's sign, but I was dying and I did not see him. But you know that wherever my father is, he will avenge my blood from you. Because finally, this news reaches me. When Rostam heard this, he anxiously said to him, What do you know about him, I am Rostam? So he screamed and cried and lost his hair. Sarab told him, There is no need to cry now that I am dying. Turkish people are done with their work. Make the king not intend to fight with them because they came to fight because of me. Rostam sat on his face roaring and crying and came to the army. The soldiers were happy to see him, but they were surprised by his sadness. They asked him, what happened Rostam told the story and sent a message to Homan through his brother, I have no war with you, but you were the one who caused the death of my son. Then he said to his friend, go to Cabus and tell him to send me some of the medicine he has in his treasure with a cup of wine, so that maybe I can save Sora best life. But Cabus said with hatred and resentment, of course, Rostam is respected by me, but I must not do anything that will bring evil to me again from my enemy. Do you remember that Sorab used to say, I will kill Iranians and hang Cabus' head if he survives, I can't control him. At the same time, the news came that Sorab was dead and needed nothing more than a coffin. Rostam got angry and shouted. He got off his horse and dust was falling on his head and said, What did I do? What should I say if his mother finds out what father does such a thing when Cavus found out? He went to Rostam and sympathized with him. Rostam said, He is dead. Don't continue the war and don't do anything to the Turkish people. The king said, Although they were hostile to me, since you are not determined to fight, I will accept it. When Shah Samangan and Timina heard the news of Sorab's death, they cried a lot and mourned him for a year after Sorab's death.
کلی براتون توضیح میدم دو همین یکی از آثار ارزشمند داره حالا اخوان اینجا اخوان اینجا میشه پشت موزه شما از سمت راست تشریف ببرید من برش رو میبینید اینجا براتون توضیح بدم ببینید این موزه سال چلاخه افتاده آقای مهندس بوشنگ سیدون تراحی شد یعنی همزمان با بازتازی بنای فردوسی و توسط انجامن آثار ملی ساخته شد در ابتدا کاربری این بنا ایجاد چایخانه و اجرای نقالی شاهنامه بود توسط نقالان شاهنامه یعنی دور تا دور می و نقالی شاهنامه انجام می شد ولی به دلیل معرفی بهتر ارزش های تاریخی شهر توز سال 61 به موزه تغییر کاربری پیدا میکنه و سال کنونی یعنی سال 84 طرح کنونی توسط آقای بهروز احمد فرتعی و توسط اداره کل موزه های خورستان نظروی اجرا میشه اشعه که ما داخل موزه داریم شامل اشعه میشه که از کابوش های تاریخی شهر توس به دست اومده و مربوط میشه به دوره های مختلف تاریخی یه سری آثار هم داریم که توسط دوستداران فردوسی در جشن هزاری فردوسی به مجموعه اهدا شده مثل این چهر چرا که هدیه جامعه زرتوشیانه تیزاره به مجموعه در جشن هزاری یعنی هم سال 1313 یه سری تابلو هم داریم که داستان های شاهنامه توسط هنرمندان دوره معاصر به تصویر گشته شده و همینطور هم هدف از به نمایش دادن اشیا داخل موزه یا همون معرفی ارزش های تاریخ شهر توسه و یکیش هم معرفی حکیم عبالقاسم فردوسیه به عنوان یکی از بزرگترین شاعران ایران در طول تاریخ و یکی دیگه است حالا دلایل به نمایش گذاشتن آثارمون معرفی بزرگترین اثر فردوسیه به اسم شاهنامه که بزرگترین اثر منظوم حماسیه در دنیا و همینطور هم مهمترین سند هویت ملی تاریخ و ادبی کشور بود این خانم مهندس توضیح بدیم ببینید این از کاباش های شهر توس به دست اومده یا حالا اطلاعاتش ببخشید داخل مسجد مدرسه توس و ببینید بهش میگن خمره که 21 سر مار داره که نشان دهنده ماهی شفا بخشی درون این خمره بوده و حالا یه سری نقوش گیاهی اسلیمی خطایی هم داخلش تکرار شده و تک لابایی هم که شامل تزئینات این خمره هستش داخلش به کار برده شده این سپر و ببینید اینا یه سری عدمات جنگیه که شبیه سازی شده یعنی اصل نیستش حالا مربوط به دوره یعنی مربوط به اون دوره یا هزار سال قبل نیست یه سری مربوط به دوره معاصر یه سری میگم شبیه سازی شده یه سری هم مربوط به دوره قاجاره مثلا این گرز گافسر یا سپر یا این زریب یا ساعت بند و این ساعت بند و کلاخ این الان چیه؟ این گرز گافسره که میگم اینا بر اساس مستندات و شواهد تاریخی ساخته شد راجب نقاشی ها چی اطلاعات داره میشه به من؟ کتابی که اینجا هستش این کتاب ها چی هستش من شما؟ ما سه تا شاهنامه داخل اونوزه داریم یکی از نفس در این شاهنامه های موجود در حالا موزه است که این مربوط به دوره معاصره که 73 کیلو وزنشه تعداد صفحاتش 1200 صفحه است و به خط استاد شرفی این یه نسخه خطیه یه چیزی حدود 50 سال قبل کتابت شده و میگم این هدیه مؤسسه انتشارات امیر کبیره به مجموعه و این شاهنامه معروف به شاهنامه امیر کبیره چه سالی؟ میگم حدود پنجاه سال قبل پنجاه سال 
کتابی دیگه هم اونجا هستش بود؟ بله دو تا شاهنامه دیگه هم داخل موزه داریم یکی قدیمی ترین نسخه ای که تا الان از شاهنامه به دست اومده بود قدیمی ترین نسخه ای که از شاهنامه به دست اومده این نسخه است البته نسخه چاپیه بهش میگن شاهنامه فلوراس این شاهنامه در کتاب خانه ملی فلوراس در حال حاضر نگه داریم یعنی اصلش با نسخه چاپیش رو داریم یه جیزی حدود دیویس سال با زمان سرایش شاهنامه جلی کلام فلوراس و ایتالیا, ایتالیا. میگم این شاهنامه معروف به شاهنامه فلوراس و قدیمی ترین نسخه ای که از زمان سرایش شاهنامه به دست اومده و نسخه دیگه تا الان به دست اومده تقریبا گفتی چقدر دیویست سال با زمان سرایش شاهنامه اختلاف داره و به خط کیه این چونه بیم؟ به خط سنگی باید باشه تو نیست؟ این دیگه دقیق نیمی دونم اطلاعاتش آیا این مثلا مصحفش کامله؟ آره مصحف کامله و یه نصفه دیگه هم داریم اینجا که با ما حالا داخل بیزن بود نصفه چاپی داریم این معروف به شاهنامه بایستانگوری که این شاهنامه الان در کتاب خانه یه کاخ گلستان نگه داریم چه نمی گمه نسخه چاپ بشه داریم که به دستور حسین باقرا در حرات این داره که ساخته شده و توی اون کتاب خونه نگه داری میشه و هم گمه یکم نفستر این شاهنامه های مصدره توی صدر کتاب خونه